Hey, Landa. Thank you so much for coming. Hi. Hi. So I'd like to show you my studio. Uh, it's in here. This is out in my um, apartment. Uh, this was once the living room, but as you can see, the studio has taken over about two thirds of it. And the studio is now also um, moving into the kitchen. And I don't really cook, so it's welcome to be in the kitchen as far as I'm concerned. I've been, in, I've been in this place for about a year now. It's a really old Cambridge building. It was built in 1920. And they've done some renovations, but it has a lot of the old features, that, which I really like. So my, my, uh, my painting process um, generally begins with photographs. And I love to travel. I take zillions of photographs. Um, and these are, well, you don't need to know where they are. These are from the Southwest. This is Cape Cod, um, but they're, they're from all over the place. And generally when I find something that I really like, I just print them out on my little inkjet printer and decide what I'm gonna start with. Um, I, these are architectural paintings, which I really haven't done yet. Um, I'm just sort of studying these to figure out how I would want to execute them. But I generally start out with two or three of the landscape paintings. And I never end up doing a painting uh, that looks like anything I've photographed. But having a photograph is a really good place to start. And when I'm traveling around, the other thing I do is I take close-ups of other artists' work because I'm really interested to see the brush strokes. I'm interested to see you know, what's wet on wet, what's dry over wet how they get the effects uh, that they get. And I usually manage to remember whose painting it was, but I'm embarrassed to say in this case, I have totally forgotten. So it was obviously one I like. Um, right now I'm working on a series of paintings and these two are the first two in the series. I'm uh, trying out some new techniques and I am working to get um, an effect, which is an effect that I often often work toward. I'm trying to get the effect of a not a realistic landscape, but a very abstracted, mystical landscape that um, has to do, I mean, this sounds pretentious, but that has to do really with, with the spirit of the place um, and with the emotion that it evokes. But mostly it's the spirit of the place. It, I, I think it's more about the place than it is about me, although I could be mistaken about that. Um, so I would like to show you how I get started with a painting. I'm ready to use, start the third one of this series. Um, the canvas I use is, this one's 20 by 20, and I use the um, 1.5 inch depth canvas because that way I have the option of whether or not I'm going to print it. I just took these brushes out of the freezer about an hour ago, and I'm hoping they're sufficiently defrosted. Putting them in the freezer means I don't have to put them in solvent, and they won't you know, they won't dry dry out on me. Um, and you know, it's 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 a fine practice if you live alone. It's probably not such a smart practice if. You don't live alone and certainly not it's not a good practice if you have kids because of this stuff is poisonous you really don't want it mixed with your food um, so both of these brushes stay really flexible which is great and the other thing I do is I leave some paint on the palette when I'm working on a series so that I can so that I don't have to reinvent each combination um, when I when I start another painting so what do we need here we still need Well, actually, basically, we need more of everything. So, uh, Payne's Gray is a color that I go through a lot of. Um, sometimes I vary that, but I like Windsor and Newton paints. They're a, they're a good quality at a more or less affordable price. 
also when I um I haven't been in this place very long so I haven't painted all of the walls yet but when I do paint walls it, it will be this color because it mostly because some people buy paintings to go with whatever color their wall is I paint my walls to go with my paintings um, um, I usually use turpentine as my solvent. Uh, today I'm using Gamsol because there's somebody else in the studio and very often people do not like the smell of turpentine. It gives them headaches, it does brain damage. It's, but I absolutely love the smell of it. So when I'm alone, I use it. I just need to grab my coffee here. The starting is nerve wracking as maybe you can tell. This is the part that is just so much fun. So I'm using I'm using the gray I mixed up. But I'm now also gonna just throw in some white. Put a little shade in there. So when, the, when my painting is going well, I paint very fast. When it slows down, it means it's not going well. Um, I really like this part a lot. I like the, um, I like just being able to create this world out of absolutely nothing. I mean, it didn't exist before and it will exist now. Um, and for me, the, um, for me, this is what painting is about. Once the paintings are finished, I pretty much lose interest in them. I'm not an artist who has any trouble selling, letting go of my work in order to sell it. Um, in fact, I really want it to be somewhere else because I have a small apartment and <laughs> I just, it needs to be on somebody else's wall. The other thing I should tell you is I don't usually paint in these clothes. I usually paint in clothes that are absolutely covered with paint than just a total mess, but I just couldn't bring myself to wear, wear those clothes for the video, so I'm looking much neater than usual. Okay, so it's time now to let this set up for a few minutes. Um, it's too wet, so I'm going to start working on the bottom part of the painting. Different brush for that. Let me just see what's on that brush before I get too carried away with it. Ooh, that's cool. I really like that. Ah, indigo. I forgot to put indigo out. Indigo is another one of these really dark colors and very hard to tell when you paint the room. Huh, that is really interesting. I wonder what's happening here. Well, first of all, I, I usually use very low horizons because my favorite part is to paint the sky. Um, this is reflecting the sky, the, um, the reflection is never exactly the same color as the sky. It's always a little bit darker 
or a little bit lighter. And in this case, it's going to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to take the sky color, mix it with a bunch of Payne's gray. I think I'm going to put in a little bit of indigo as well, if I can remember where the indigo is. Pretty sure this is the indigo. Some painters uh, place their, their paints on their palette in exactly the same place every time, which is actually a really good idea because you know what you're painting with, but I seem to have trouble remembering to do that. So I'm going to just try to clean off this brush a bit so I don't want to get too much light paint in my dark paint. And other, pe other people are much um, more careful about keeping their brushes clean than I am. Um, well, I'm not sure this is exactly what I want to do, but I'm just going to assume it is. So let's do it. Too symmetrical, which they might be. So I think I'll just move one over a little bit here. Exactly the same shape. That's actually that's kind of interesting. Um, so I've been working with some new techniques, and one of them is to use rice paper to create texture. And using a brayer to create texture and to pick up some of the paint. So let's see how this goes. Not quite firm enough to move with the brayer, so let me anchor the canvas a little bit. And now when you put this down the next time, part of what's gonna happen is you're gonna pick you're gonna put down some of the paint you just picked up. And that's part of what makes it interesting. Ah, there we go. Now we're getting more of the effect I'm looking for. Love it. Thank you. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with how that's coming along. I'm not happy with um, the straight line here. You can't have straight lines. It just doesn't work well. I think I'll get that to be a little more organic looking. some of this darker color that I moved that I used down here and get some of that into the sky. So, ooh, yeah, bright. Uh, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. Let's just see how it goes. This is getting to a, to a point where we're um, a little treacherous where the land meets where the land meets the sky the horizon which is always it is always just i mean in real life as well as in painting it is such a moment of mystery i mean just it, it just really intrigues me and how it's going to go sometimes that's part the, a part of the painting that for me that um uh needs more work than other parts. That is okay. So let's just see if we can. Ah! Ooh, dripping, dripping. Ooh, I think that's really going pretty well. little spot right here has this bit of white in it that is really bothering me. I'll 
So the rule that you can paint just with paintbrushes is ridiculous. You can paint with anything, paper or fingers. bottom part dark and then I will um, emphasize more of the lighter side above. Oh, lots of grips. Oh wow, look at that. I'm muted. So I want to try to get a, <clears throat> just a little sense of kind of a trail around this painting, particularly in the sky area. So. happy with this painting. I'm not I'm not liking this down here. Time you just have to keep taking paint off. So I guess the thing I want to do right now is See if I can get some more drips going from up here, which seems to be in these two. I mean, for some reason the drips are over on the left side. I'm not really quite sure about why that is, but it is. So let's see if we can make that happen again. This is just a spray bottle with damsel on it. I sun my paintings by scratching my name into them while the paint is still wet. And I used to sign them T, T Lee, but I've started now signing them Tanya Lee. Um, huh, these drips are interesting. Uh, I, I can't exactly tell you why, but I started doing that about two months ago. So the signature is there, you can see it, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't draw your eye, it doesn't draw your attention. So obviously I want it to be signed, but I don't want it to be the thing that you see first in the painting. Okay, so I, re I really try here to uh, show you my painting style and to describe to you some of what's going through my head when I'm painting. Um, and I hope you found it interesting and informative. Thank you so much for watching.